Welcome back to The Morning Line, everybody. Tom Cassidy alongside Matt Carruthers. Wednesday, October 1st. And, Matty, we had a big weekend of stakes action this past weekend on both coasts. Uh, the East Coast, Belmont Park, of course, Super Saturday, and a great afternoon at the Great Race Place as well. Yeah, I always enjoy our Wednesday discussion with Chief Timeform U.S. figure maker Craig Milkowski. And I'm really looking forward to that segment uh, that's about to begin here in a moment because there is so much to cover. There is a lot of uh, right racing to, it, guess, to right? talk about. So let's welcome in our guest. That is Craig Milkowski, hey, Timeform U.S. Craig, how are you? Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Doing very well. Looking doing forward well. to uh, recapping all the great racing that we saw this past weekend. And we'll start with New York, Belmont Park. It was a grade two Kelso, one mile over the uh, fast main track. Tell us your thoughts about the Kelso. Uh, well, first off, it was an interesting placement for It's My Lucky Day. Uh, hard to, I didn't understand it before the race, and I understand it even less after. Uh, River Rocks actually got the highest figure in the race with a 112 because uh, he set set a pretty fast pace, and yep. I mean, he fended off two horses, and then Vijack came late to, to get him. Uh, he got a 111 for the win. But personally, I think River Rocks ran the best race. And it looks like they're both. I mean, Vijack for Rudy Rodriguez with a big weekend. We're going to get mm -hmm. more Rudy Rodriguez discussion in, just in the second. bell. It looks like River Rock's probably going to go to the dirt mile. Obviously, your winner, Vijack, the same. And it's my lucky day. Uh, we're now at the bell dame with oh, Bell Galante. Cigar mile, then retired. Yeah. And it was Rudy Rodriguez again, Craig, in the bell dame. Bell Galante, uncontested lead early. Yeah, it was almost a re repeat of the uh, Delaware Handicap. It was the same exact thing. She yep. looked like Lone Speed on paper, and uh, apparently the jockeys didn't read the form because they just let her go. Uh, she set what was a pretty slow pace for this class, uh, 103 pace figures, and when she turned for home, she just had a ton left. I mean, nobody was going to catch her with that lead. And it was a, the time form U.S. pace projector pretty much nailed that race, right? Yeah, she's been very good to us. <laughs> well, let's go on to the uh, next stakes action. Uh, of course, the next stakes event. We had the, uh, the Flower Bowl mile and a quarter on the turf, and Stephanie's kitten getting back to the winner's circle. This is the best she's looked in a while, isn't it? And, and she was much closer to the pace than she's been in recent starts. Yeah, I think that was the key. I mean, she was within about three lengths of the lead most of the race. And, and to be honest, watching the race at home, I didn't think she ever looked like a, a loser. It looked like she was always going to win the race. Wow. Uh, she ran a 112 time for him U.S. speed figure, which is pretty good for a grade one for fillies and mares. I uh, may have trouble handling the European. She might have to step it up uh, come Breeders' Cup time, but it, it was a very solid effort. Well, the Vosburg was almost a replay of the 2013 edition with Private Zone the way he won again. Yeah, that was a nice, uh, very nice effort. He, he's just a game horse. I mean, he, he battled through fast fractions. I mean, these were no slouches he was battling with. Uh, uh, happy, uh, happy my way is a fast, very fast horse early. And uh, to, to give up the lead to a good horse like Dad's Caps and, and be able to come back and retake the win was, was impressive. And I think he's definitely going to be a factor uh, in the sprint. Was there any excuse you saw for Palace, who was your heavy favorite in the race, or not? He kind of made, he showed a little interest late to finish third. No, I actually, uh, based on our race ratings, this was the toughest he's been in in a long time. And really, he, despite uh, his heavy favoritism, he, he looked like a particularly weak favorite to us. Well, let's talk about what a monster uh, main sequence is. Uh, winning the Joe Hurst Turf Classic, third consecutive grade one, and three for three since coming here to the States. He just seems like he's getting better and better. And Craig, how is he not favored in this race? He wasn't favored. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, I, I bet against him, uh, unfortunately, but... Uh, you know, he certainly was a, a contender. I, I don't think this is the strongest crop of turf horses we've seen, and, and I'll probably bet against him again in the Breeders' Cup. Maybe I'll regret it, but his 111 speed figure actually is less than Stephanie's kitten, so hmm. I, I just don't okay. think these horses are, are true grade one horses. And then, uh, of course, the feature on Saturday, Belmont Park, the Jockey Club Gold Cup, tonalist uh, getting the victory there and uh, earning a 111, correct? Yeah, it was a good effort. Uh, he just keeps getting better. I think he's improved in every single race. Uh, he's going to have to do it again if he goes to the Classic and, you know, takes on horses like Shared Belief and, and whoever else shows up at 111 won't get it done. But then again, like I said, he's getting better every single race, so so maybe he's got more in him. He, he's your uh, second. The race was marred a little by that unfortunate incident yeah. with Wicked Strong. Yeah. Yeah, right. We'll talk more about that. Wicked Strong done for the year. He's going to come back as a four year old Rajiv Mirage, surgery and a broken arm. He's going to be okay. Hopefully, he'll be back even for the Breeders' Cup. He's going to get reevaluated in two weeks. Yeah. We will find out whether so or not he's going to it, ride Breeders' Cup. Yeah. It could have been much worse. But back to Tonalist. Solid second choice now in the classic, right? 
Yeah, I think he has to be. Uh, I just, you know, other than shared belief, yeah. I, I don't know who I'd want over him. And uh, Tonalist, yep. Yeah. Now, I believe Tonalist and Zevo will be shipping out as late as possible to the Breeders' Cup. Going to do their major preparation in New York if they decide to go to the class. Both horses world. who have clearly done their best running at Belmont. Yes. Both of those horses. Tonalist exactly. and Zevo, your suburban winner. Let's move out to the West Coast, right, Tommy? Let's do it. All right, Craig, let's talk Zenyatta Beholder, uh, winning by about three parts when all was said and done. Yeah, but it was an uh, easy yeah. win here. This is an easy win, Craig. Yeah, it was an easy win. Uh, it wasn't particularly fast. Uh, this was her third start of the year, and the, the fastest figure she's run is a 110. So, you know, you can say there's reasons for those. The first race yeah. was just a prep. She had issues in the second. But I'm still not sure I'd want to take this horse at a short price come the Breeders' Cup. Uh, just, just assuming she's going to get back to, to her best numbers. Well, let's talk about a pretty impressive <laughs> two-year-old yeah. this weekend who was able to go to the front end in the front runner and keep running all the way to the wire. Really impressive, Craig. Yeah, American Pharaoh. Uh, I loved him in the Del Mar Futurity, and he did look pretty unbeatable on paper. And, and he just he set a slow pace, uh, 93 for the half mile before finishing up in a final time figure of 105. And uh, something we often discuss when the pace is fast, how that impacts horses' figures on our scale. Well, in this case, the pace was slow, so therefore his figure was actually downgraded to 100. And a calculator uh, received a 98, even though he finished three lengths behind because he was making up some ground late. All right, let's get to the Rodeo um, grade one event. And Amalian, uh, you know, Hall of Fame trainer Bill Mott puts the blinkers on. Craig, was it the blinkers? Was it that, you know, she's just, you know, obviously backing on top of her game and four of her six lifetime wins are in grade ones? Or was it the competition that she was dealing with out here on the West Coast? Or all of the above? Yeah, I think it's probably a little bit all of the above. I mean, obviously, the West Coast turf uh, fillies and mares are, are not the strongest. I mean, when Amalian's the favorite off of just two dismal efforts outside of California. It's telling. Uh, she ships in. And, yeah, it's telling. And, and, you know, she did look like a more focused horse. She didn't necessarily show more speed like blinkers will tend to do. But, you know, she's just better than these horses. Like you said, I think she's now a four-time grade one winner, and, and the rest of the field just doesn't have those kind of credentials. Well, the final stakes race we're going to talk about this weekend, the grade one chandelier at Santa Anita. Angela Renee sitting a good trip, getting out to the top of the lane there, finding clearance and going on to victory. Yeah, she certainly flattered Condo Commando, that's for sure. Uh, now, I'm sure some of that was probably the sloppy track as well. But, uh, you know, she won pretty easy over Conquest Eclipse. The public had it as a two-horse race, and that's basically how it played out. You had some long shots uh, up on the front. And, uh, you know, Condo, or Angela Renee sat in behind the door and, and tipped out, and she, she was the best horse. I mean, Craig, we don't, we don't see the awesome again there. Any, any right. quick thoughts, though, about, about shared beliefs, gutty win? When it, it did look like he was defeated turning for home. He was a tired racehorse in the lane, but you can understand why with all he went through right. and how wide a trip he had. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you have to, I have to say turning for home, I thought the bridge jumpers were in trouble because uh, yeah, it didn't I look too. like he was going to hit the board. And I actually bet Fed, Fed Biz in this race. I didn't think he was the best horse, but I thought he might work out a good, good trip. trip. Yeah. He did. But, you know, it did, didn't matter because Sheer Belief was just that much better. I think I read he, he ran 66 more feet than the winner. And, uh, you know, he was just clearly the best horse. Greg, uh, as we look back at all the action and, and all the figures from this weekend, who was the most impressive to you from all the, from all the uh, stakes and races we just talked about? Uh, well, I hate to be a chalk eater, but I think it has to be shared belief. I mean, he ran a 114, mm -hmm. uh, which is the first time uh, he hasn't run a new top, but I think we, we could all see what happened there. Uh, if we accounted for ground loss and the trouble he had, he probably would have easily been in the 120. So I think by far he was the most impressive horse. All right. Yeah. Craig, thanks for joining us, uh, and uh, we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks, Craig. All right. Enjoyed it, guys. Have a good day. All you right. Too. You too. Thank you very much. It's Craig Mulkowski.